Hi, I'm Tom and today I will show you an overview of Blender settings that get processed in GameKit. Let's get started. Start Blender with the default cube and um, yeah, let's start on the render panel. The first thing you see is the start button at least with the experimental add-on this is actually starting the Blender engine, so it's not the game kit. So if you start this, you see the uh, what you expect, but it is not game kit, it is the Blender internal game engine. What's working is the X and Y axis, uh, the resolution for the for the um, for the game. Okay, before we can start a game kit game, you first have to save it somewhere. So let's start again. Here you see 640 to 480 pixels. Let's change the x axis to prove that it is working. Yeah, the x axis got increased. Okay, full screen is working. Anti-aliasing is not working, I guess. Bit samples refresh rate um, isn't working as well. Um, shading using multi-texture and GLSL, there is a difference internally. I'm not 100% sure how where you can see the differences. I can only say if you use GLSL, the rate. Um, Bogar 3D's real-time shading system is activated automatically. The dimension panel or section is not mapped in any way. Bake neither, but it's very useful. For example, if you want to generate normal maps, you can do this with this tool. Um, start uh, yet on the game kit section there is a start layer option by default gamekit will use the layer setup you will set up uh, here on the on the on this bar but one uh, there are times where you want to override this and if you say i want only layer 1 to be shown on startup you can um, hit or mark the checkbox here. If no checkbox is selected at all, the default setup is used, otherwise the setup you use at the start layer. Okay, start game will start the game with game kit. Save config will save a config file with some options you um, set here. Start server, start IO server and start IO server I will um, talk about in another tutorial. I guess choosing the render system isn't working neither. I am quite sure that I uh, set to o uh, OpenGL only. Enable sh shadows. Shadows are in a way working but not very stable. They used to for the desktop systems, but I wanted to change it to um, a, a shader-based system, but didn't succeed that well, and um, yeah, it is still in this not not that well state. So if you start the engine, you will see, okay, there is some shadow, but you shouldn't rely on it. Shadow shadows are one of the things that should be fixed very uh, at the very beginning. Um, shadow color isn't working neither and the type also not working. Activate PBS uh, you can ignore this. Grab input will keep the mouse cursor in the window or uh, with uh, if you uncheck it you can see the native also and can click out of the window. 
Material blending, I will come to this later. Verbose is, yeah, you can show more output if starting the engine. FPS is uh, the, the frame rate for the animations. Start frame, I'm not sure what this is doing, if it's doing something at all, I don't know. Here you can set up the window title, the runtime where it is located. We already already did this in former tutorials. The working directory. Two slashes are actually the current one, where the where the blend file exists, and the name of the log file. The properties you can output some special properties that are marked to be um, to be printed on the um, during the game with frame rate and profile you can um, show some additional information like FPS triangle count batch count and so on yeah sometimes w um, where the processing power per frame is um, wa wasted. Physics visualization is uh, you can actually should see this um, yeah I fix this because uh, for some reason it was deactivated per default and in, 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 in the current version this will work let's see where is my current version it is here no You see the green lines, and the green lines are showing you the physics representation of this object. Here you can see it is triangle based. I come to the physics uh, a little bit more in detail later. Physics A, A, B, B are the axis aligned bounding boxes. This should work, but it I okay. It seems that you have to activate a physics visual visualization to show up. So the red ones are the axis aligned bounding boxes. Debug sound. I don't know if this is actually working. Frustum culling is just just um, render the objects that are in the camera frust room. I guess this should be checked always. Build instances is uh, an optimization to um, co to collect objects of the same of the same material to be rendered in one batch. But this has also some negative um, side effects. So you should only use it if you know what it is doing. For example, it is deactivating the physics for this object. So I, I guess this would be a topic of its own later. Okay, this was the render panel. Let's go to the world panel. The physics section here is not mapped. It should be, it could be, but it's only a matter of um, doing it. If you start the engine you see um, a grayish background and this is actually this one. So you can for example just change the horizon color and start, ga start the game and you see it changed.
the blend sky once worked but it's somewhere stopped um, I'm quite sure that I t just replaced it because uh, it made some problems on the Android uh, port not sure not very uh, not hundred percent sure about it ambient color will set the ambient color with the mist yeah this worked also once I'm not sure um, about good values here you have to try it on your own but it worked once so it shouldn't be a problem to get it reactivated if it's uh, if it's um, not working okay on the object panel the transform is mapped of course and the rest not beside the groups but this is also a topic of its own constraints yeah you can constrain with limit location and limit rotation it will actually check after each frame if the location is in its bounds or not or the rotation and will set it back this might have some very strange side effects if using physics because it is not taking the physics calculation in account and the physics will have very 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 strange behavior afterwards so use it with care modifiers are not applied on safe or something like this so you should always have in that in mind that if you have uh, for example a um, uh, subsurf modifier and say okay this looks very nice and smooth and um, if you start this for example you see it's still the cube it is still the mesh that uh, it is so if you want this mesh to be inside of your game you need to apply the yeah the modifier that is for the modifiers let's go to the to the mesh or data info um, I actually don't know about those vertex groups are mapped I don't know if you can use it programmatically at least not on the Lua side I guess shape keys are not mapped UV maps are mapped vertex colors are also mapped okay now we come to the materials you see at the moment we have this ma material the material name is of, of course mapped um, the diffuse color is mapped so if you start the game um, if we start the game you see now it is red the specular color is mapped intensity is are mapped hardness is also mapped in a way emit is mapped ambient is mapped uh, uh, this ambient is how much of the ambient color you set here is taken into the account for this object translucency is not mapped shadeless I don't know wh when stops to work at least for the colors textures, textures are working so if you set it shadeless you actually should get something like this color but for some reason it is only white I don't know why and I did try to have a quick look why but um, I couldn't fix it very fast so it's uh, not working at the moment transparency is also working but you have to set the alpha blend here to alpha blend and then the spec the alpha value here is taken into account i'm not 100 percent sure alpha clip i'm 
quite sure I implemented that, but I'm not sure if this is if this is working. I have in mind that I have a clip value of 20, 128 or something like this, or maybe just under uh, 254 to be clipped out. But uh, this is more a guess than, than that I would know it. Invisible is working, so you can um, make this object invisible. You see the, <laughs> the shadow is still there, so this is not um, as invisible as you would um, like it to. So this is a bug. But the phys physics should also be still available. You see. Text is not working. Um, and backface culling is also working. Physics friction is working, so uh, yeah, you can set the friction and elasticity uh, value. But this is uh, more a topic for the physics. I will make a tutorial of its own for the physics. The rest, um, yeah, let's go back to to the vertex colors. You can go on and um, paint the vertex colors here. But I'm not 100% sure how to enable this in the right way. Uh, if, if you, for example, now start it, it won't show up. There's one way, you can just turn off the material. Then it will show up with shading, you see. And there's one way, you can use the material in shadeless mode. Then it's also working, in a way. Maybe not the way you want to, but uh, the, those are the two options I know at the moment that will show you the vertex colors without using shaders. With all of those options, I'm not sure if and how they are working. I guess those two should be mapped some in a way and will also have some effect for the vertex colors, but I'm not sure. Shadow, receive and cast is mapped. Yeah, that's it for the for the material panel. Now go to the texture panel. The only texture type that is mapped is image or move V. Um, I will choose a media I already saved. So if um, I will start this. We will see that it's not working. Oh, um. And this is because you need to set to set up the coordinate mapping to UV. This uh, has no UV map at all at the moment, so it, this should also not work. But if we now make, for example, a smart UV projection. We get uh, an automatic UV map for the sphere. And now there is the texture showing up. <coughs> I will set this to opaque again. So the material is now without transparency. Just to show you that you can set the alpha values as well if you check this box. 
for this I will first show you the image. You see here there is a section that is um, without alpha value so at this at this location you shouldn't be uh, you should see through the object and here you see you see the background okay With the image sampling, usually normal maps did work in a way. For this you had to set this to normal map, tangent was okay. Um, but this stopped to work somewhere. I'm not sure how to activate it at the moment with our shaders. Image mapping, repeat will work. So if we set this to 10 and this to 10, we uh, I might just set something wrong, but let's give it a try. Uh, this is not working, it is working. Here. 10 to 10. Then you see the texture is multiplied 10 times on the whole x and y axis. I guess all of those has no effect. I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. It should be, but it actually is not. For re repetition of the texture, use this size. This is working. You can choose the UV map. If not, uh, the first UV map is used. Projection has no effect. Um, yeah, the rest, I guess, is not mapped. Influence, yeah. Color is mapped. Alpha is mapped. I'm not sure about the values, I guess those are not 100% working. I guess it's only a matter of yes or no, more than taking the value into account. I guess here the rest is not mapped, this is not mapped, intensity I guess n neither, Geom geometry, normal was mapped or was working for the normal maps. I'm not sure why this is not working anymore. Yeah. The blend mode is mapped for the different um, textures. If you have more than one texture, how those are combined. Okay. This is this for the. Usually we should be through with the render panel, but uh, wi with the texture panel. Um, but with this material blending, we have an option how to map or how to. Um, how to scene blend the object. So how the um, the res result of all of those textures and and the um, material settings is then rendered onto the scene. Uh, you can influence this if you set up the material blend thing here. Then GameKit will take from the ramp here the blend value how um as an input how to how to do the scene mapping so if i set this to add you get oh okay this is not working 
Why is this not working? I guess add take something different. Add with maybe okay. Yeah. So you see, actually I never use this, but this should should work. I'm not sure why it's not working but it's it's for me okay now um maybe has something to do with those yeah yeah now it's a sub subtracted set it to add hmm. Okay, but you see, it has some effect. Uh, I will set this off again, and um, yeah. Okay, this is the visual stuff. Now let's go to the physics stuff. From default, every object you create is a physics type static, so it will be taken into account for the physics calculations. If you want to uh, make it just a visual component, set it to no collision. Then it will not be part of the physics world. But if you, but if it's part of the physics world, you have different collision box bounds as options. If it's not checked, but it is in the physics world, it is automatically taken every triangle into account. If you want it to be, for example, just a box coll um, collider, you can choose box, or capsule, or sphere, or cylinder, or cone, convex hull, or triangle mesh, which is a defa default value. So if we choose to use the box, and we set up the physics visualization and set start, we see here is a box. Also rendered in the shadow. Very good. No, not very good, but you see the shadow is not very good, uh, in a very good shape. Good. To set it um, as a rigid body, you can set up here rigid body with its values like mass, radius, radius is, I don't know if this says something, if this is mapped, I guess not, the mass is mapped, minimum maximum velocity is mapped, I'm not sure if this is something you want to use, I'm not sure how it is implemented. If it is implemented with, uh, with using physics, functions or methods, then it's okay. But um, for example, if you use something like log translation or rotation, this is actually losing using those tr um, those constraints that are just doing it outside of the physics calculation and you will get very weird results. So I will uh, tell you, don't use those. There are other ways to to log translation, but you have to do this at the moment programmatically. Damping, I'm not sure if this is mapped. No sleep is mapped. So usually if the if one rigid body falls to the ground, you see the color will change. And this means it is now sleeping. If you don't want it to sleep, for some reason, you can check the no sleep button, start the game, and then it stays red all the time, which means it's not sleeping ever. You can make it a ghost. Ghost means y it is not having collisions with other objects. So usually, if this is checked, you it will just fall right through the uh, through the ground. 
again you see very good shadows. Yeah. With the collision groups and collision mask, uh, you can set every object into a certain collision group and give it a certain collision mask, which will then calculate if both objects are actually going into a collision or just recognizing this collision. You can also set um, set it to dynamic. Dynamic is actually like a rigid body, but not uh, but locked all the rotations. So if you, for example, set it like this, it will not fall to the ground and uh, set up the right um, rotation for this object. It will just keep its rotation as long Mm, yeah, uh, actually, it will never change it in physics calculations as long as you might change it programmatically. Then you have a sensor. A sensor is actually something like a ghost and is meant to be something like a trigger. If you run through an area, you can recognize it and do something like open a door or something like this. Okay, this is um, a quick look into the physics and yeah, I will, this will conclude the whole overview. I hope it wasn't too confused, but um, I will go um, into detail more in other tutorials. Thanks for watching!